All right, everybody, this is Zane from Really Easy AI. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about using GPTs in 10 minutes or less. And don't worry if you don't know what GPTs are, we're going to walk you through it. So first and foremost, let's talk about what GPTs are so you understand. So at this point, I'm assuming you've used ChatGPT um, and you've probably done a little bit with it, asked it some questions. Well, imagine taking ChatGPT and having a specialized version of ChatGPT just for certain types of activities, right? Maybe you want a version of ChatGPT that helps you with your resume, or you want a version of ChatGPT that helps you with your cooking, or something along those lines, any of that stuff. That's literally what GPTs are. They allow us to give ChatGPT special instructions and take on special personalities so it can help us with very specific types of tasks. And we're going to look at all the different types of tasks that are out there. So let's jump into it. First and foremost, you got to know how to get to your GPTs. It's actually pretty easy. Let me show you. So in ChatGPT, all you have to do is click on Explore GPTs on the left-hand side. Now, if your left-hand side panel isn't showing up, it's probably because you collapsed it. There's a button here that will collapse and expand that side panel. You're going to want to always keep that side panel up unless you have a reason not to. And then click on Explore GPTs, and here you can get to your GPTs. Discover and create custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and any combination of skills. And then they even have categories and all kinds of good stuff. But this is how you get to your GPTs. All right. Now, once you've gotten to your GPTs, how do you find a GPT you want to use? Well, that's pretty easy, too, because they actually have them organized into categories, top picks, so here's your top four picks. You can do it by uh, image generation, which is DALL-E. You can do it by writing, if you want some writing stuff. So let's take a look at some of these. Image generator, here number one in DALL-E is image generator. Uh, number one in writing is write for me, write tailored engaging content. Number one in productivity is Canva, ironically. Um, and then PDF AI. Research and analysis, Scholar GPT, enhanced research with 200 million plus resources and built-in critical reading skills, nice. Programming, number one is CodePilot. Used to be Grimoire, uh, but they have, uh, looks like CodePilot edged it out. Okay, that's interesting. Number one in education is math, the world's most, pow most powerful math tool. And number one in lifestyle is astrology birth chart. All right, rock and roll. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to top picks. Um, in addition to uh, going through the categories, you also have a search capability here. You see the little search GPTs. We can click and search GPTs and we can search for whatever we want. Let's say uh, we're looking for something to help us with our resume. Well, we type in resume and right away it's going to start showing us results or we can just press enter and it will show us the results. Let's try that again. There we go. Well, hang on. Okay, it looks like it cached them. Let's try something different then. Uh, if you've got prior results, it, it usually will, usually it'll show you a list though. Let's try dogs. There we go. Now it's searching. Okay, so there it is. You can see now, uh, because I'd done a resume search before, it had it cached. But if I just type in any keyword, it will show me a list. And then I can, if this isn't enough, I can always click on see more. And uh, I can keep scrolling through this list and then keep clicking on see more. So any type of keyword you want to use, whatever it is you're looking for, if we're looking for cooking, specifically, we just type cooking. And there it is, cooking recipes, cooking pro recipes. And it's, uh, it's not organizing these by popularity, though. It'd be nice if we could, because you'll see cooking recipes only has 5K folks interacting with it where Recipe Generator has 25K, that's huge. I'm gonna click on Recipe Generator, that looks pretty pretty sweet. And when you click on any one of these, uh, Re Cooking Assistant, Mimic AI, create dishes from all around the world with Mimic Personal Sous Chef, I'll click on Start uh, Chat. Whenever you go to any GPT, usually those GPTs will have some type of starter stuff, like here, it's kind of funky because of my resolution. Hang on, let me close that out. Oh, no, still not helping. Okay. It says, like, how does this work? View your dish before you even start cooking. And it's just my resolution making this look like crap. It actually looks pretty cool. But how about we click on how does this work? And then uh, it'll explain how it works. Now, 
depending on the GPT, they'll have different prompts to get you started. This is cool. It helps you create dishes from all around the world, shows how it works, view a dish before cooking. You can describe a dish you're interested in and help you visualize it. Recreate dishes from images. You can upload a photo of a dish, original recipes, you want to try something new, customize cooking instructions. Look at all this stuff. Nutritional information, drink pairings, grocery lists, meal planning and additional features, instant ingredient substitution, smart leftover utilization, and access to educational resources. So there's a lot going on here. Um, let's try something pretty simple. Uh, how do I cook, uh, or how do I make maybe, spaghetti? And let's see what it does. Basic recipe for classic spaghetti. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. And it takes us through it. So very nice. Very, very cool that we can take advantage of that. All right, so I want to go back to my GPTs again. So I click on Explore GPTs again. By the way, notice as you use GPTs, it's going to show you your most recent two GPTs on the left-hand side. Now, if you want to keep those GPTs around, let's say you have some GPTs you really like using, all you have to do is come to the GPT on the left-hand side. You see these three dots? Click on that and click on Keep in Sidebar. And what that'll do is keep it around so that as you use more GPTs, it doesn't go away. It'll actually keep it around. So um, how about, so let's go to Featured here. How about Universal Primer? The fastest way to learn anything. Okay, number two in education. Uh, explain how transformers work. How does... Kellerman filter learn. What is the proof in Fermat? Fermat's last theorem. Teach me how uh, Godel incompleteness theorem works. So this is some pretty complicated stuff here. How about this? How do atoms work? Atoms are fundamental building block. And then again, notice as it as I start using this, once it's done, it should show up in our list over here. So I'll click on stop. And it may take a second. Usually it shows up in the list over here. Actually, it didn't show up in the list. That's pretty weird. Okay, very cool. Uh, I know the upgrade may have had a little weirdness. I bet if I refresh, it'll show up because I definitely used it. Yeah, there it is. All right, so this is weird, right? It didn't, usually it'll automatically update, but if it doesn't automatically update, refresh F5 or hit your refresh, wherever you refresh your browser, your preference, and then it'll show up. And again, um, if as you begin using more of these, these will go away. So let me go back to my GPTs and show you that. So I, I remember I said to keep this one in the sidebar, but I didn't say to keep this one in the sidebar. Well, now let's go back to our GPTs. And I'll just use a couple more GPTs just real quick. We'll do consensus. And I'm just randomly doing stuff right now just to show you how GPTs will go out of your sidebar. Um, through use. Oh, it wants to talk to chat. Yep, allow that. And away it goes. So you see here, consensus just showed up with Universal Primer. So that's how it should do. It should automatically update. Now let's go back to GPTs and let's do Grimoire. Grimoire was an awesome GPT and I think still is. Pretty cool. And I'm just going to pick something there. And away it goes. Now, it should have automatically updated, and it looks like it's kind of waffling, so I'm going to have to refresh my screen. All right, so notice what happened. Remember I said it keeps the last two that you used? So I used um, that one GPT the, for the primer, um, and then I used a couple more. Well, it only remembers your last two unless you tell it to keep in sidebar. So if you don't tell it to keep in sidebar, uh, it'll go away through use because it only remembers your last two. So I'm going to say keep in sidebar for grimoire. And then notice it actually makes a little line here between the ones that I'm keeping in my sidebar and the ones that uh, the two, you know, uh, that'll go away. So uh, as I start using a new one, I'll get two down here and then they'll just replace each other. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we've covered off on everything I wanted to cover off on. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you would, please, if you enjoyed this video. And um, yeah, we did using GPTs. That's it. Thank you for joining me. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.